Okay, hi, Assalamualaikum and good day everyone So, for the first video, kita akan go through chapter matter And dalam chapter matter, the first chapter ni, kita ada tiga subtopik So, untuk this three subtopik, the first one kita ada Atoms and molecule And then next, kita ada mole concept And the last one kita ada stoichiometry For atoms and molecule, you should be able to Write the isotope notation, interpret mass spectrum, calculate the average atomic mass of an element given the relative abundance of isotope or a mass spectrum. And last one, calculate the relative atomic mass based on carbon-12. Now, let's go through the definition of matter. So, as you all already know about matter, So, matter dalam bahasa Melayu dia adalah jirim. Okay. So, matter is anything that occupies space, memenuhi ruang and has mass. Mempunyai jisim. Okay. So, example of matter, they are everything around us. Okay. Udara, animal, trees and so on lah. Anything around us. So, matter, it consists of Atoms, molecule, and also ions. So there are three states of matter. The first one is solid, liquid, and also gas. So state of matter ni nanti kita akan go through again dalam chapter 5. Now let's have a look at atoms. So atom is the smallest unit of element yang paling kecil. So, atom it is made up of three subatomic particle. So, subatomic particle ni apa? Proton, neutron and electron. Okay, so ini let's say ini adalah satu atom. So, it is made up of proton, neutron and proton and neutron ni di dalam berada dalam nucleus. Okay, and surrounded by electron. So, now let's have a look at proton number. So, proton number is the total number of proton that present in the nucleus of the atom. It is also known as atomic number. So, setiap atom dia ada number of proton yang tertentu. Next, kita tengok nuclear number. So, for nuclear number, it is the total number of proton and neutron. So, kalau kita nak kira nuclear number ni A, note sebagai A, proton plus neutron, kamu akan dapat nuclear number. And it is also known as the mass number. Alright, so let's have a look at this isotopic notation so let's say you have atom X okay, so ini adalah simbol kepada atom tersebut and A here means nuclear number Z here means proton number so contohnya kalau kamu ada sodium, kamu nak represent dia dalam keadaan isotop notation so kita tulis dia punya atomic symbol Na for sodium and 23 here is for the nuclear number 12 is the proton number and untuk proton number semua detail tentang elements you can refer to the list of elements that I've provide in the telegram group So now let's try this example. Let's say you have this element bismuth. So the proton number is 83. Means you have 83 proton in the nucleus. And if you want to calculate the neutron, so you just deduct. So kita dapatlah A tolak Z. So kalau kamu tak ingat, senang je. Nombor besar tolak nombor kecil. Okay, so kamu akan dapat 126 so since this atom is a neutral neutral atom lah sebab tak ada tulis charge dekat sini the number of electron will be the same with proton 
So now let's have a look at this example. You have mercury. So mercury ni ada charge, ada charge 2 plus. So from here we know that it is proton number dia 80, 80 for proton, 202 ni untuk nucleon number. So kalau kita nak cari neutron, tolaklah kamu dapat 202 minus 80 equals to 122. So electrons for this mercury, the so, charge is positive 2 here. So, the proton number minus dia punya charge 2. So, kamu akan dapat 78 bilangan elektron. Okay. So, remember, kalau atom itu positively charged. Okay. So, how to calculate proton tolak charge, bilangan charge. Okay. So, for this one, proton is 9. And neutron will be equals to 10. And electron will be equals to 10. Okay. So, why we plus here? Okay. So, remember, kalau negatively charged, ingat electron negative. Okay. So, if it is negatively charged, so maksudnya bilangan electron dia bertambah. So, you will add with the number of charge here. Let's have a look at this example. So, sodium tadi kita dah tengok dia punya example. So, let's fill in the blank. Let's have a look at isotopes. Isotopes are atom of the same element which mean they have same number of proton. But the only difference is they have different number of neutron. Okay, so because of this, they will have same or similar chemical properties but different physical properties. Let's have a look at the example of carbon. So, for carbon it can exist in three isotopes. So, it can be carbon 12, carbon 13 or carbon 14. So, let's have a look at carbon 12. So, for carbon 12, it has six electrons, six protons and six neutrons. So, dari mana kita dapat 12 ni? It comes from the nuclear number which is 6 plus 6. So, nombor elektron di sini kekal sama. Yang berbeza hanyalah just now different number of neutron. So, from there kita dapat 12. Carbon 12. Okay. So, let's have a look at carbon 13. So, untuk carbon 13 pula. Number of electron kekal sama, tak ada perubahan untuk isotopes. Yang berbeza hanyalah neutron sahaja. Dia ada tujuh neutron and proton kekal samalah enam. Sebab kalau proton berbeza, contoh uh, proton tujuh, tujuh proton, it will be atom lain which is nitrogen. Okay, so yang berbeza dekat sini hanyalah neutron sahaja. You can see here, bilangan neutron berbeza. So, macam mana kita dapat nama carbon 13 ni? It comes from the nuclear number which is 6 plus 7. So, kamu akan dapat 13. And same goes to carbon 14. So, for carbon 14, it has 6 proton, 8 neutron. And the total here, 6 plus 8, it will be 14. So, you will have here. 14 for the nuclear number. Okay. So, for your information, carbon 12, it is stable. Carbon 13, it is stable. But for carbon 14, it is radioactive. It is not stable. So, kegunaan-kegunaan isotopes ni, dia ada beberapa kegunaan lah. Especially untuk carbon dating. Apa kegunaan carbon dating? Biasanya, dia digunakan untuk 
bidang arkeologi. Let's have a look at relative atomic mass. Okay, so ini adalah dia punya simbol. So, this relative atomic mass, remember perkataan relative. Okay, it is average mass of one atom, satu atom, any atom of an element. When we compare to one twelfth of the mass of carbon twelve, nanti kita akan cancel off this unit. Let's have a look at this example. So determine the relative atomic mass of element X if the ratio of atomic mass of X to carbon twelve is zero point four five. So soalan ni dah beri ratio. So just masukkan dalam formula and compare 0.45 over 1 so means kamu compare x and carbon 12 Now, let's have a look at relative molecular mass. So, this is the average mass of the molecule when we compare with 1 over 12 of the mass of carbon 12. Okay. So, ingat bila ada perkataan relative ni, mesti kita akan compare dengan carbon 12. Okay. Maksudnya, nanti later on, kita perlu cancelkan dia punya unit. Okay. Because we compare mass of one molecule dengan carbon 12. So, final answer relative has no unit. Ini ada sedikit pembetulan and this data refer to the list of elements yang Miss dah pernah share dalam group. So, the answer will be okay, kamu hanya perlu darab 5 untuk carbon, hydrogen darab 5 and nitrogen darab 1 saja. Pause the video and test yourself to determine the relative mass for each of the following compound and you can refer to the list of elements given. So here are the answer for test yourself 1. Next test yourself 2. A molecule of M is triple as heavy as one carbon 12 atom. Calculate the relative molecular mass. To find the relative molecular mass, you need to use this formula. And since the hint given is, it is triple from the carbon 12. So, you can straight away 3 times 12. Sebab dia cakap 3 kali ganda lebih berat. 